Okay, <clears throat> we're going to talk about signal flow. Um, the f first thing is uh, the signal flow uh, would be from uh, the iPad via Wi-Fi to the router, and then the router goes to your node, and that would be your DMX node that will eventually give you your light show. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up um, Photon here, so we open Photon, and uh, this will be our uh, light show. These are our different shows, um, and I'll go over that uh, if I haven't already. Uh, so then I open up my show here, and then uh, I have it on live. Uh, basically, uh, you turn it on live if you're going to either record a show for me. That's what I would do. Um, and then uh, when it's on live, you'll see that you have a control surface, and this control surface can... Uh, you know, send uh, data to um, your uh, uh, to your DMX light show via Wi-Fi. It goes Wi-Fi from the iPad to the router and then out to your DMX. That's if you want to use the iPad and the control surface to do that. If you don't want to do that, then um, data has to come into the uh, iPad in order to uh, move these various controls and uh, those are other things that I've either already gone over or will go over on how to assign the MIDI uh, notes and controls to the different parts of your light show. But uh, they can come from hardware uh, through like a USB connection, camera connector like this, uh, and it would plug into the lightning port, and then you can use a control surface, or if it's hardwired in from another, I'm just using a little key station, but just to indicate that you can use a keyboard. A couple of things I would like to recommend is the uh, CME Witty Master. Um, that's something that would connect to the fi five pin DIN port on your keyboard. And uh, it will convert the five pin DIN port into a Bluetooth transmitter that can actually send data into your um, Photon uh, session. And that way from your actual performance keyboard, you can be controlling uh, your light show with uh, whatever controllers you want. To me, that seems to be a little cumbersome. Um, so I would have uh, an automated light show programmed. Now there's another device. Uh, some of those devices you have that you bought and it's like, thank God I bought this thing. I really love it. And that would be the uh, MixFace, StudioLogic MixFace. And the MixFace uh, can either connect uh, hardware uh, to uh, your iPad, or uh, it also has a Bluetooth feature, and uh, in this case I'm using a Bluetooth. So you have eight controllers here, actually a ninth main fader, but eight controllers, eight knobs, eight notes, and uh, what's cool is in this one single patch you have four zones, and for each one of these eight you have uh, an upper and a lower, so that means that you have 16 of these per zone. So in one patch, you have 16 times four of all of these controllers, which is uh, quite a bit of control just inside of one um, uh, preset. And the cool thing about it is if you use this uh, thing called MIDI MITER, it uh, actually connects everything to the uh, Photon 2. Right now you see that the um, mix face is not connected. So I'll go down here to my devices and then I see my uh, mix face here, and it's going to be connecting. It's going to be establishing a connection here. And now we're connected. And so you'll see now that the mix face <clears throat> is being able to control Photon 2. I'll just shut off these two things. So now you have the mix face is controlling uh, Photon 2. So let's go back to Photon 2. And the cool thing about it is, as you can see here, that you can control things via Bluetooth um, with the uh, mix face. So basically that's how you get the data into Photon, how the data gets from Photon to the router, and then how it gets from the router and winds up at your DMX. Just a little word about the, the DMX node. The DMX EDMX Pro 1 Pro uh, I've used that for a bit here, and I've noticed that um, 
it's okay. Uh, it's had a few dropouts uh, when I was doing live, um, but it was super easy to set up. So if you're starting out, great product. If you're someone who doesn't mind going into the web interface and changing the, and there are videos on how to do this, changing the 2.2, this is not as easy. It's not just plug it in and, and use it. Uh, you actually, unless you're going to use the standard DMX 2.0.0.1 uh, type of a paradigm, uh, you want to change it to your router that might be 192.168.1.1, and this is like uh, a different address, 192.168.1.66. Um, then you have to change it from the 2.0.0.1. That takes a little bit of doing. However, once you accomplish that, I found that this Chauvet um, DMX AN2 uh, has been pretty solid and reliable um, as far as once set up um, and we run Photon in live mode. Um, I haven't had it miss uh, a light um, so far. So I favor this. Um, I started with this. This is easier to set up. A couple of just it's it's about 98%, uh, but it's got a couple drops. Uh, this one so far is 100%. Um, it it uh, executed the light show with no problems whatsoever. So that's the notes. So let's say, um, well, I already have a controller and I don't want to make the investment in the $260. So let's go ahead and shut this off. Um, okay, that's fine. You don't want to invest in that. So uh, what you can do is you can invest in um, something that will connect your legacy um, uh, MIDI device with the five pin DIN and make it Bluetooth capable, BLE capable. A couple of them are the Yamaha MT, uh, MD BT-01. Um, I don't favor this one because the latency is a little bit uh, much. Um, it's kind of cool as a controller, but if you're laying down MIDI notes in Cubasis and you really need a, a low latency device, um, this may not be the one. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like CME products. Uh, this is the Witty Master. And um, basically what it does is it plugs into like I have one plugged in here. I have a few of these. Um, and uh, it plugs into your uh, MIDI uh, five pinned in, turns it into a, a BLE device. And uh, so here's how we would set that up. First, let me power up um, my MPK261, okay? And uh, these are about 62 to $64 for the CME. Same price for the MDBT01. Uh, the Witty Master is the same price, so 64 bucks as opposed to 250 for uh, this controller. 64 bucks makes your legacy five pinned in into a controller, a BLE controller. So um, we have it on. Uh, very important if you're going to be controlling things, um, you have to make sure you have the right patch. Um, so if you have a certain patch that's dedicated to Photon, be absolutely sure that your device is on that patch before you try to control anything because you'll be thinking that you, uh, something is wrong when there is really nothing wrong. So we have it set to the Photon patch on my MPK261. Now we just go into MIDI MITRE. We see that the, the Yamaha is what I named uh, this device. Uh, even though it's a CME, um, I named it Yamaha because it went into my Yamaha Montage 7. So uh, all I do is I tap on here. We've got this connected, okay? And now that we have this connected, we uh, have a source, but we don't have a destination. So what we need is we need a destination, which would be our Photon 2. Now, remember, I had one show that used the mix face. Um, this other show, New DJ Swarm CCR May 22nd, uh, I start this up. And the reason is, is because this is using uh, my MPK261. So we go into live mode here, and then we see since we had this connected, we now see that the CME, which I named Yamaha Bluetooth as a source, is actually pointed to Photon 2. And then what will happen is, is now I can actually program a light show basically using 
the MPK261. So you can see that uh, using the MPK261, um, for example, I can control all of the uh, lights uh, here um, and you're looking at these faders, you know, I use this like a master fader for the lights and then I can use all these faders, one for the uh, red, green, blue, and so on and so forth. Um, actually, uh, doing a light show, I actually kind of like this paradigm better than the mix face because um, the mix face is if I don't want to lug around a bunch of stuff, I just want a little iPad and I want the little mix face and do my thing here. But what I like here is I've sectioned off this part of the keyboard to um, uh, faster light movement um, if there's any light movement and then this part of the keyboard to slower light movement and the black keys are reserved for special lights. And so we'll see, for example, that I have set these to uh, flash mode. I don't use the buttons or the MIDI notes in toggle mode because for me, sometimes I want lights to change quickly. So let's give an example. Let's say I want to flash quickly from red, green, blue. So let's have a look at the screen. I'm pressing on the keyboard here, okay? I, I can do this quickly if I want to, and then an all white flash, you know, dot, 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 you know, whatever, something's coming up like that, and then I can quickly go to these if I want to have a you know real uh, a real quick light show then I don't have to toggle on and off if I want the light to stay on I just press and hold so that's really cool and then over here on this part of the keyboard um, I have where uh, this is my reserved for my the rabbit means the the lights are going to move quick uh, they will roll on a little faster um, sometimes if it's a more exciting part of a song um, if it's a verse of a song, I typically have a slower rolling light. Um, so uh, faster lights might be on a chorus or a bridge or a solo. And then the slow one would be like on a verse um, or something to that effect. So as you can see, you can uh, program things into your uh, Photon 2 using BLE. Even if you have an older device, um, 64 bucks will get you there with one of these if you really want to have some cool fun with uh, the mixed face for 250 bucks you know that that's also uh, something you can do as well okay so this is where we uh, get to the um connections and the signal flow uh, now that we've had everything connected we already talked about uh, the signal flow from the hardware controlling devices but now that we have uh, this uh, connected here I am using the uh, EDMX1 Pro and uh, basically this is going to be sending out the DMX uh, cable and you can see my places I have a cold so that's why I'm sniveling basically this cord is coming up to here and it's going to be plugging in here uh, to one of the lights. What the fixtures are that we're using are uh, four of your basic Amazon um, whatever you uh, you know the LED lights and then uh, a couple of uh, Chauvet um, DJ Swarm uh, lights three in one. Uh, they're pretty cool but if you'll notice um, the way you have uh, your channels routed. Now, each one of these has uh, six functions in it or six channels. So each of them has to have a reserve of six uh, spots on the channel spectrum. Uh, these uh, use 12. So what you'll see here is, is I, let's say for example, I start over here at A1, uh, it's upside down. But since that uses uh, six channels, okay, so then what that would be, oh, this is A08, uh, that is incorrect. Hold on a moment. There we go. Okay, so uh, that's A01. 
So if that uses A01 through A06, the next thing would be A007. Um, so then if you go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, the next one would be 13. And 6 beyond 13 would be 19. And then 6 beyond, or uh, 6 beyond 19 would be, let's see where this one is. Uh, where did you go? 6 beyond 19 would be 25. Now, uh, from the, this DJ Swarm to that DJ Swarm uh, would be 12. So you go 12 plus 25, hence you get 37. Now, with this kind of an array, this kind of setup, then it means that I have individual control over each one of these fixtures. Let's say, for example, I really don't want individual control. I want all these to do the same. That's fine. Then this would be, uh, um, these would all be starting out at one. And uh, then after six, then the next one up would be seven. You could make uh, both of these seven. And uh, they would, each one of them would do the same thing. This would do their own same thing. This would do their own same thing. Another thing to note is um, the terminator that you have at the end of your signal chain here um, the best way if you're setting up the cables start out with your terminator and then wire it backwards that way you're wiring it backwards all the way back to your node and there's a reason for that because if you're trying to go from your node uh, to the terminator uh, you can get confused with your routing so it's always good to start with your end of the chain terminator uh, cable or whatever the terminator fixture that you have on there um, and uh, work yourself backwards okay